Well, how's it going, everybody? How about them damn Bengals? That was um, that was a little different. Get the uh, uh, sack, sack, field goal, overtime, interception, field goal, win. Not too bad. Uh, sounds like audio is working decently tonight. Uh, what we're going to do here is I have a PlayStation 2 that is in mostly working order. Uh, the laser is malfunctioning a lot. I think it's just dirty, so we're gonna we're gonna take this apart. We're gonna clean it. All right, let me see if I can get my camera positioned here. Let's see what we got. Tighten some of these up a little bit. Pop the keyboard out of the way here. I apologize for the lighting. It um, may be a little bit spotty because it is over my head. <laughs> but this is what we have. Uh, these are incredibly easy to take apart. Uh, hopefully I have enough stuff sitting here to do that without having to grab too many tools. We do need to start with taking off the hard drive and network adapter. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do that. It's just two screws. The whole thing comes out. Also, make sure that you have taken the disc out of the system unless um, the CD tray itself is stuck and that's why you're taking it apart. Uh, that's the only way to get the CD tray open in these if it is stuck is to disassemble the unit. There is no eject button like a PC CD-ROM has. Yeah, we got ourselves a, let's see here, a 40 gigabyte hard drive. Oh yeah, quality stuff there. I'm gonna set this aside. Yeah, you know, that would hold your entire library of stuff. All right, so now we got a nice empty hole back here. And we're ready to start the disassembly. And we're gonna need a real small pry tool. Hopefully I got something sitting around here we can use for that. All right, that's our pry tool. It is a small kitchen knife. We need to pry out these two plastic divots that are in the centers. And since it's metal, gotta be careful not to bugger up the plastic as I don't like to bugger things up. All right, and then there is actually two more plastic ones on the underside. These are one of the easier systems to take apart. They're, they're fairly simple and they just have Phillips screws that are of a normal size, uh, nothing special. They are a dream compared to some of these newer systems that everything snaps together in specific locations or it's glued, some type of adhesive. Strangely enough, this is the number one selling gaming system of all time uh, by actually a pretty decent margin. It's only slightly ahead of the entire Nintendo DS handheld family. So if, to put that in context, they had a dozen systems. They are second place as a collective. Right, now one good thing to do when you have all these screws here, and they're going to be of different sizes is we do want to stack them out and lay them in order on the table so that uh, when we go to put it back together, we know which screws go where. I'll illustrate this on top of the back of the case. So we have those 
screws. And this fourth one over here that takes just a little bit of TLC to get out of there. And they have some varying sizes. So do you need to set those on the table in that particular order so we don't have to guess at screw locations? Uh, that is a lot of times important because there could be a board component behind where you're attempting to screw this in. And if you put a screw that's too long in that spot and you just keep cranking on it, you can crack into the board behind it. That is not what we want to do, especially during disassembly, or rather reassembly. And one more screw. And we'll have the unit open. Yep, everything feels nice and loose. Let's go ahead and pop this apart. Now one thing to watch for is in the front, uh, normally this has a plastic cover for the CD tray. This, this one is broken off. And then we have the doors for the memory cards. We have the controller slots, the USB over here and the power button and reset button. We do have to be careful to rock this off in a way that doesn't rip up against those components. Once we're in here, we need to grab a smaller screwdriver. So here's the one we use for the case. Here's the smaller one we're gonna use. It's just a, a standard small screwdriver. And we're gonna crack these couple screws right out of the CD-ROM cover. Uh, we don't need to pull the entire CD unit out, and there's only two screws on the top here. There is a warning to not stare into the laser beam. Uh, that is legit, because even though there is a red color to it, that is not what the laser is doing. The uh, laser is primarily infrared. You will not see it, and it will be damaging the shit out of your eyes. But since we're powered off, don't have to worry about it. Let's see here. There are some pop tabs on the sides. Right here. And right here. And we just bring those out to the side just a tiny bit and it loosens them out of the way, uh, for the most part. There we go. No pressure, just jiggle. Here's what we want to get to, this laser right here. Now this is a DVD laser. Uh, this is different than a CD-ROM laser, and actually there's a piece of hair right there. A couple pieces of buzz and all that kind of garbage in this apparatus. I may need to grab a can of air when we get complete, but uh, let's see. Most of where that is looks like it is okay. It's not actually in the laser aperture area. What we're going to do is we're going to very, very extremely gently we are going to clean this laser off. What we have here is some regular 70% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. I would suggest you do not use the 90% stuff. Uh, that is too powerful. And it can sometimes cause rust and corrosion pretty well instantaneously on other microcircuits in here. Now this laser is held up by a really, really small electromagnetic coil. So when we press it, it's going to move. We do not want to put any side-to-side -side motion on that while we're pressing it down. We just want to kind of rub around in a tight circle and 
try to mop that up. We do not want to press it at all. Um, that is a very sensitive coil. And if you mess up its calibration, it will no longer read DVD discs. Uh, DVDs are dual layer. Uh, well, the ones for these were anyway. It was dual layer, and that means that the laser has to move up and down to focus on different points of the disc. All right, so we'll get our alcohol side back here. We'll do that one more time. Get off anything that's on that laser. And we'll dry her out. And that's it. We'll make a run all the way around the outside edge there. See if we have gotten any liquid. I don't see any liquid. That's good. All right. That's that's actually the extent of um, how to fix those. Now you can see, I don't know if the camera will actually see that, but the end of the stick does have some kind of gray blueness to it. It's probably got lint and smoke and all sorts of stuff in there. So I guess our next step is reassembly. This is just the reverse of disassembly. We snap in our two guides here and make sure we get set down in these little pegs. Be certain we're snapped down, which we are. Grab our little screws and put those back in if we can. I'll try to stay out of the light as much as possible, but it's kind of Kind of difficult in here. There we go. We're out of the light and out of the camera. Even better. That's it for the CD tray. Um, everything in here looks clean. Uh, the fan, uh, let's see if we can see the fan there. Fan is clean. Nothing really on there. Other side of the fan, clean. We don't need to do that. I may have uh, already cleaned that portion out. Uh, these are really, really big heat sinks. They're not tight like a modern PC. So they don't get clogged up. We'll go ahead with this piece. Now with this piece, remember, we hinge from the bottom to so make sure the reset button gets in there and the controller ports all the way until you can kind of feel that it rocks and then lay it back flat. Make sure we're all the way flat and we are. Make sure we orient it the same way as we took it apart, which is this way. They're kind of hard to, to watch that on the camera because it's backwards to me. I like looking at a mirror. We'll just place our screws back in the holes that they go. larger regular size screwdriver and let's just put a little little bit of tension on the ones in the middle hold everything in place actually there, there is no torque order on these at all but I like to, to give it some type of 
center holding before screwing everything else down, especially the ones that have little snap ports. You don't want one side to get snapped down first and then the other side has extra angular tension. It's just a, a habit, I guess. Alright, and we've got our little plastic feet. The plastic pieces go on the uh, underside here and in the center. And then we have our rubber feet on the four corners that will touch the table. Uh, one of the good things about the PlayStation 2 is you can orient it on its bottom or on its side. It has four rubber feet on the side of it also so that you can set it straight up and down. We have one more step here and that is the hard drive and network adapter. Uh, now we don't have to put this back in but it is part of it, so we will. Now there's a little bit of jiggling to get that into place, but once it's to this point, uh, the bottom slides in nice and sl snugly, and we tighten these two big monster screws on the back. And that's it. And there you have it. We have the hard drive network adapter all back in place and hopefully we have a clean working laser. Well we can uh, we can hook this up and we can try to play some games on it. Unfortunately I streamed that from a different machine uh, so we may have to uh, stop the stream for a few and then get it all hooked back up stream ready over there and start that again. I believe I have two of the older Grand Theft Autos we could try out. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 3 and Vice City, I believe. Uh, it's been a while since I've played those. I'm not going to remember the cheats, so we're going to die. But, uh, yeah, leave a comment if you'd like to see that. And uh, yeah, if we get a couple comments, we'll go ahead and do it. Until then, stay safe.